what we wanted today to do today is um, um, you know there are two aspects. We want to um, uh, we want to acknowledge the people who have participated in uh, a number of the lectures. Um, so the way we arrive at the thirty percent is that. Um, you know, we understand that uh, not all the lectures are of interest to you because you have different majors and stuff like that. And, and then there are other constraints. So uh, one cannot expect everybody to attend uh, a significant uh, uh, major part of, uh, of all of the lectures, but roughly 30% should uh, be of interest to you, at least of a general interest for you to be able to attend. Um, we had planned to stop the online lectures today. However, there have been some requests for, for more lectures. So there will be lectures next week, all the way to uh, December as well. And eventually sometime next year, there will also be online uh, seminars and lectures. So after today, please feel free to attend any lecture that you feel is uh, of interest to you. Uh, um, is in line with what you are doing. And there will be still a very good uh, experts uh, who will be uh, invited uh, to talk. And in addition, I had requested uh, people um, of the alumni and students who wants to make presentations um, of their work. Um, I think some of you have asked for that. I think those are welcome. Um, but we do want to organize that differently by making sure that the people are registered uh, properly. So I've sent some registration information. Um, you mustn't feel, feel free, you mustn't be shy, just uh, if you have some interesting activities going on, even if it is an outreach activity that you are doing in your country or elsewhere that you want to talk about, please feel free to, uh, um, to register your, your, your activities so that we can program it sometime next year in the spring. Um, then we'll start uh, programming the online uh, uh, lectures by the alumni and students who have registered. So that, so um, then as well today, so we want to basically just tell you about the certificates uh, for the people who have the 30% uh, attendance uh, up to now. And also we want to tell you about uh, the ASP mentorship program. Um, which uh, we usually run, um, you know, every uh, it's continuous. It goes all the it goes on all the time, all the time, even when there is no school. Uh, there are some issues; it needs to be improved and so forth, and and we need to find resources for it. Uh, nevertheless, um, we want to tell you about that, and if that should be interesting to you, then you should uh, register and apply. Uh, this doesn't replace your academic advisor. Uh, your academic advisor is your academic advisor. It will be that person will be responsible for your thesis. So the mentorship is to work with your academic advisor and provide additional support for you. So you mustn't take your mentor as your academic advisor because these people are they are very busy and they haven't signed up to be your academic advisor unless they have specifically. I uh, made that arrangement with your university or, or your research group. But, um, but nevertheless, they can be available to provide some assistance and support for you in consultation uh, with your academic advisor. I think that should be really very clear. So um, you should, if you sign up for, for, for that support, you should also talk to your academic advisor so that they are aware of it and they understand the scope of what uh, the ASP mentorship is. So we want to explain this scope to you today so that you can explain it to your academic advisor should you decide that uh, this will be interesting to you. Uh, hi, Christine. Hello, okay, Debbie. So sorry, again, jumping. Uh, no problem, I understand. So maybe what we can, we can start with you, uh, just telling them a little bit about the, about the, uh, um, the certificates and, and, then, and then I will then uh, start with the uh, mentorship program afterwards. Very good. So yes, so looking at, uh, so finally, so the, I mean, the last day of all of those uh, wonderful lectures that I guess and I hope uh, has brought you as well to uh, a nice um, kind of um, melting pot of a different uh, discipline that you may 
be specialist in or not. But uh, what Ketavi has already explained, so is that we had tried to, to identify the student who attended so most of uh, the, the talk, even if uh, it's not in your discipline. I think it's very important as well for you to know about that. So what we have done is to write a sort of certificate for um, most of you who attended, and those certificates are available on the, um, the, the Indico page. So if you have any comment or find some mistake, please don't hesitate uh, to let us know. Uh, so this certificate is not equivalent to ECTS or, or anything uh, that could give you directly uh, some credit in your university, but I think that you would be more than welcome to present it to the, the university and to try to see if you can have as well some, uh, some kind of equivalent, but at least you have a, a paper copy of the certificate. And uh, so we thank you really much for your, I mean, your attendance. Uh, any kind of uh, possible comment so that we could improve as well the, the, the quality as well of the next lecture, so are more than welcome. So it's really important as well, as well, this dynamics that exists. So this is what we have been missing, of course, because virtual means that we cannot have hands-on activity. We have tried uh, indeed with Uli um, uh, is to get uh, some kinds of hands-on activity. It's very difficult, uh, this we have seen, but still uh, the question answer. So we saw that there was some momentum with that. We would really encourage you to, to participate, to contact us. And, and if you have uh, so some questions or whether for Ketavi or me or, or, or the member, of the committee, so feel free to contact us. Huh? And there will be another series as well. So I just put, uh, and I can show maybe uh, an announcement later on for the next uh, uh, online lecture uh, series that will start on the 24th of uh, November till only uh, the end of uh, January. So this could be as well something interesting for you if you are interested by any kind of um, so light source or um, spallation source, so neutron source and equipment or big infrastructure that could be led to that. So same kind of series, but much shorter. Uh, and then otherwise, so we are, I think, very happy to, to have used this uh, new type of technology as well to, to, to empower and hopefully to give you some ideas in what you could do as well later on after your bachelor or master, or if you are already graduated and have some post up to give some, some um, understanding maybe, maybe on some of the topic and connection. So the network aspect is very important. So we, in any case, uh, need to stay connected and we really greatly appreciate uh, so the, the attendance. So have a look at your certificate. Let us know if there is any uh, part that we could improve. We will have as well a new website. So there will be as well some way to communicate certainly through that. Be aware that we are not expert, I would say maybe with communication tools as you are. So that is maybe one of uh, the, the, maybe a call for any person who would be interested to help us with that. You're more than welcome. So we could uh, have definitely some support. Huh? And then the mentor mentee program is as well an important part huh? uh, to get the sustainability as well of our program. So you have seen, so from this website as well, the continuity for each of those courses we had face to face uh, every two years now because of this COVID so virtual. But that add a value, if you see, because all of those courses are online and recorded via YouTube. So this is a good thing and we can connect. So I would encourage you as well to make sure that you have, um, that you link or that you try to disseminate those information because all the lectures that we had were an excellent, uh, I mean, representation of the best type of teaching that you could have in the world. And this is really, I would say, a luck. I never had this when I was uh, when I was student. So, so I think it's it's a luck for you. So make the best use of that, uh, and make sure that uh, you will continue in the world of physics because this is we need you more or less. Uh. So this was maybe right. a bit long way, but then uh, it's important that um, so you 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 use what you have learned. It was not only for fun at some point maybe, but then make the best use of it. Uh. Um, okay, Christine, thank you very much. So basically, these are the 
uh, the certificates here. Yeah, you just look and uh, find your name, and then you uh, and then you download that. Uh, like Christine said, should you notice a mistake or errors and so forth, let us know to correct. All right. So um, um, on that note, uh, we're going to move uh, now to the ASP. Um, uh, mentorship uh, program. So I will um, um, I will share my uh, my slide. Um, so let me just uh, do this first. Um, I will share my uh, my slides. So I would like to go through a set of slides. Um, in principle, um, in principle, we would have done this. Uh, um, during um, during the, the ASP 2020 in Morocco, uh, but we didn't really get a chance to do it. Um, there are a number of people who are new, so I think my slides are still coming up. All right, do you see my share screen? Yes. So let me see why. The evaluation to mentor, huh? Um, so I need to do one thing here. Um, just hold on a second. So, all right. Um, something's going on that uh, I don't necessarily want. Yes, that's what I, yeah, let's see if uh, it give. okay. So there should be, yeah. So um, we should have uh, in principle um, given a talk to explain what ASP is and all that uh, stuff uh, during the term school, but we didn't have a chance. So I will go through this very quickly and then, and then tell you a little bit about uh, the, um, about uh, the, 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 um, the, the mentorship program. Um, so what is going on here? So, all right. So basically, um, yeah. So ASP, I, I will go through the, the whole nine yard and, and so forth. But I think you should understand that the African School of Physics is much more than a school. It's much more than those three weeks programs uh, that we have every two years uh, in uh, an African country. It has a, a lot more things that, are, that go on even when we don't have a school. So we, 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 we look at ASP as a program of actions, yeah? And, uh, with uh, the objective to, to participate or to contribute to development in Africa. Um, so, and that's what I really would like you to understand. Um, um, although this is started in, in, in 20, 2010, yeah, um, it has grown quite significantly. Um, you see in this table, for example, which, uh, um, which activities have been added yeah, so we started with the term schools and you'll see the number of students that were selected, number of applicants, and you see how the application has grown over time um, and the number of people selected. Typically, we have about 30 people who are still on the waiting list um, when we do this selection and, um, and we cannot absorb all of them because uh, we are constrained by the number of people that we can put at the venue. Uh, and also we are constrained by the number of people that, uh, I mean, we also by the budget. Yeah, so um, the mentorship used to be, for example, um, when you meet a, lecture, a lecturer at the school after that, you know, you contact this person and that, that informal, type, informal type of uh, mentorship existed all the time. And even now, uh, you know, you, some of you have contacted people who give online lectures and maybe they have given you some advice or some suggestion and so forth. That we always encourage here, he always exists. Now, but in 2016, what we decided to do is to try to make that sort of mentorship more formal and more engaging and therefore maybe more beneficial to, to the students. We haven't succeeded um, completely yet. So I can, from feedback, we know that there are, are issues but nevertheless, that is our objective. Um, so, so you see, for example, that uh, we also have program for high school teachers when, you know, the year when it was introduced and program for high school students uh, when that also in was introduced. 
And also a professional conference is integrated within those three weeks um, where anybody, people who are not even lecturing or participating as students can come and present their, their, their research work. Yeah, so, so you see, those, all of those things are there um, as a part of the program. Now, what happens is that when the school is finished, after those three weeks, and when everybody has returned to their homes, um, then our mentorship program really takes effect because we don't want to just, you know, uh, let you disappear. We want, to, we want to know how things are going for you, how we can help you, how, when, with whom can we pair you, pair you up with, for, you know, to help you better and so forth and so forth. So you can see that the mentorship program is actually a huge part of it. And if we do it right and have the right resources, it becomes even more important than the three weeks of uh, uh, um, uh, school. So the school of Morocco has been postponed, as you know. We have set a new date in August 2021. Um, that may or may not happen because it depends on how COVID evolves. Um, there is a typo here. We have already selected South Africa for 2022. Is it will be at the Nelson Mandela University in Port Elizabeth. All right, so the organization is essentially that, uh, you know, normally we have a local organizing committee in the country that uh, is selected to take care of all of the lo local logistics. Um, the international organizing committee is the one responsible to manage the program, fundraising, coordination of activities, and preparing reports back to the funding agencies and managing the, 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 um, the, um, the mentorship program and so forth. Right. We also have an international advisory committee where we have representatives of the funding agencies there so that they are aware of what we are doing, how we are using their funds. And then they also tell us how their funds should be used because some of the funds come with some strings attached and we have to respect those things. There is also a board of trustees which is responsible for all of the legal issues. Um, ASP has been incorporated as a trust um, in, in, in South Africa, but it's, it's an international um, institute in that sense. Um, and, and, and the board of trustees is also uh, responsible for uh, you know, asset management and protection of the ASP itself as an entity. Um, then we have the international lecturers. So these are the people that we go to, to help design the program, to help mentor um, ASP students. And these people are extremely important for the success of our program because they participate on voluntary basis. We don't um, give them, uh, we don't pay them anything. They pay for their travel uh, from their own institute. In some cases, we may have a small coverage for, you know, maybe accommodation, but so their contribution is, is really huge. Yeah? Um, and, and we have to acknowledge, acknowledge uh, this group of people. Um, so, and, and we do also um, um, impact assessment through surveys. We survey uh, students and, and, and also professors and, 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 and so forth. Usually those survey, there is one kind of survey that happened during the, the school itself toward the end. We have a survey that asks all the participants about their experience. Then every four years, we have another survey of all the participants. And then the mentorship program itself, uh, midway through that program, there is also another survey. Um, and we also worry about spin-offs. Yeah? So one of them is the mentorship program then the networking and sharing of, of information. You may have seen already that in our networking email list, there is a lot of information that has been shared. Some of them may or may not be useful to you. Um, you know, so we sort of maintain that, uh, that sort of spin off. And also we try to con continuously adapt the program to make sure that uh, it is aligned with uh, um, you know, the priorities of African countries. So, so for example, um, you know, when we organize the, the school in a specific country, try to make sure that uh, the, the scientific program reflect uh, to a large extent some of the 
um, activities, scientific research and educational activities in that country. Yeah, and, and that help us improve future editions. And we help promote collaboration and consortium, consortiums. Um, I don't have time to go through all of those things. We have some, some success in those stuff, those sort of things. Um, we now have a large pool of alumni as well um, who, are, who, who want to, 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 be, to be involved. Um, so you guys are the next generation. You should be thinking about that. Um, one day, I, I, you know, uh, me and Christine and other people, I see my colleague here, uh, Mary Bishai, we're going to have to walk away and there needs to be people like you to come forward and, 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 and take things up and, and do it better. So here is the original people that, uh, I mean, the people who are in the international uh, uh, organizing committee who are basically the people who started the ASP originally. Um, the trust, uh, the trustees right now has three people. Um, these are some, you may know some of these people. Brian Masera um, is the CEO of the South African Institute of Physics and, and is responsible for all the things related to budgets and, uh, and auditing and, 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 um, and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, so, so that's basically the more or less the structure in terms of scientific scope, we have so far concentrated on things like this. Um, all of this type of, uh, uh, of physics have found their way on, onto our program. And like I mentioned before, um, we try to then tweak a little bit when we go to a country to try to be, um, to make sure that uh, the program has a bit more focus on what is interesting for that country. Um, so um, the activities I sort of, talk about it before we have uh, a student's program during the school itself that usually is the entire three weeks. Um, then um, we have uh, one week of high school teachers where here these high school teachers comes from the host country. We work with the Ministry of Education of the host country, the local organizing committee. Those are the people who select the high school teachers who participate in the program. We don't make that selection. We only worry about the selection of the international students and, and, uh, and, 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 the, and the local students. Then we have high school program. Uh, le learners here means high school students. That's also one week. It's, uh, it's an outreach program, which is also organized in connection with uh, the Ministry of Education um, of, uh, of the host country. And one day during, during the school, we have a forum and uh, this is intended to have a discussion about, uh, you know, where, you know, how to align ASP better to on the priorities of African countries. Usually, we invite uh, politicians to this discussion. We invite the media to these events. Um, we invite some of the industry representatives to these events. Um, then we also have the the ASP, the conference that I mentioned. Um, which um, is intended for alumni because, um, and you know, we don't reselect people who have participated in previous editions. And we also have a number of people that we cannot select, like I mentioned before, due to budget and due to um, logistics. But the conference is intended for the people who are not necessarily selected, um, who are not necessarily involved, they want to participate then they can submit abstracts to come and give talks. Uh, normally we don't have budget to pay for the travel. So uh, most of, in that case, they have to find the travel. Um, if we had budget, we could pay for the travel, but we cannot promise that. We only pay for uh, the students that have been selected. Um, and then we have added these online lectures now. And like I said, and Christine have mentioned, this will be a series of seminars that will continue uh, the frequency may be reduced as we go further. And you guys, uh, alumni and students, um, if you are doing good research or good outreach and you want to share that with us, you are welcome. Like I said, register yourself and put your abstract over there and we'll schedule you know, the first round of uh, the student uh, talks um, next spring. Yeah, so um, you know, there, there is a lot of activities when you're doing ASP, this is uh, um, in, in 2016. Um, you see the pool of people. This is uh, Professor Fimeas 
Nkuda Bakura from the University of uh, Rwanda. Um, he was teaching Linux uh, to this uh, um, in, the, in the first few days of the school. Now, in terms of the profile, let me just say one thing. This is from this selection of uh, 2018, um, where we have 50 male uh, for, uh, with 35 uh, female, 85 people um, in total. So, so you can see that the female to male ratio is, is, is quite good. Um, I believe that ASP is one of the best schools in terms of gender balance. And we have made a serious effort since 2014 to really um, you know, make that happen. Uh, you see here the distribution of the selected students. Uh, you see the peak around Namibia most of the time. The large, largest contribution tends to be the, the, the students from the host country itself, but you see a, a good distribution. That selection takes into account a lot of uh, criteria. There are requirements from funding agencies. We try to es establish geographical balance across Africa. We worry about least developed countries as defined by the United Nations and also balance, uh, gender balance, like I mentioned, and of course, competence uh, uh, itself. Here you see the age distribution of, of this batch of people that peaks around um, you know, uh, 26, 27. And then if you compare that to the degree program, uh, the peak is around masters. Yeah, so you can see that the, the people are a little bit older um, you know, for the master's degree, but you know, that's just what it is. Uh, here is uh, the distribution by, by, uh, by fields of study. So this is what uh, during the online application, we ask you what is your major, what is your field of study? That's where that information comes from. Um, you see here that nuclear and particle physics is only 15 to 20%. That's one of the reasons why we have to consider other fields on our program. So I don't want you to think that ASP is just particle physics uh, uh, school. Um, it's a fundamental and applied physics. Yeah? And so we want to consider other things. And you can see, for example, only 20% of the people that have been selected really have a particle physics uh, uh, background at the time. Um, so we pay attention to those things. So here is, uh, for example, the um, the teachers program, all of these guys, people you see here, uh, high school teachers from the 14 regions of Namibia. Like I said before, they were selected uh, by their Ministry of Education. We didn't participate in that selection. And then they were brought uh, uh, to the venue. Here's my colleague, colleague Milan Diwan at BNL. Um, I think Mary is in the background somewhere there. I, I can't, uh, maybe not in this photo. There's another colleague of mine, um, uh, Kenneth Cecile, who runs uh, the teachers uh, and, uh, and high school program. Um, in Namibia, we had 70 of these people for one week program. Yeah. And then, like I said, we do outreach um, as well. So all of these things are happening in parallel during those three weeks. So it's really heavy, but we are very good at managing all of these, all of these things. And the objective here is to motivate high school students to develop and maintain interest in physics. These are some of the Namibian high school students. Um, in, in, in the School of Namibia, we cover up to 40 high school in one week. So that amount to um, somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000 high school kids that participated in this program. So you see that we can really have a huge coverage. We cannot do it nationally. This was within the 14 high schools where within the vicinity of Winduk. Um, but nevertheless, um, you, can see the, you can see the range of, of, uh, of this program. Then we have the, the conference as well. It's integrated um, in, uh, in, the same, uh, in the same activity. Uh, Christine, could you please manage uh, the chat and see if there are any other things that we need to uh, answer on the chat? Uh, thanks. Um, so, so here, um, in the case of Namibia, there were 60 extra persons who came um, for the conference. It was the first time we organized it. And, and uh, they, um, then there was a proceeding. People submitted uh, their research um, as a part of a uh, conference proceeding. This was published by uh, the African, um, African Review uh, something, I forgot. This is the link here. You will see all the publication there. Yeah, so, 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 so we have this also going. 
Um, then on the forum day, um, so like I said, we have a day of forum for discussion. We invite politicians and all of these things uh, were the forum day of each of uh, the school. This was the first school we had in South Africa. Uh, and these guys, are, that's Daniel Adam there, and this is the CERN representative there. Um, and this is Professor Jean Clemens, um, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, this is in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, uh, Senegal in 2014. This is Professor Hamadou Wagi there. Uh, this gentleman um, <clears throat> here, Professor Toure, uh, was the, uh, the head of uh, the International Telecommunication Union at the time and supported the school at the time. And now uh, here in Rwanda, um, you know, Marie Christine Gazingiwa here is, was a part of the Ministry of Education of Rwanda at the time. Um, we met the Minister of, uh, of, uh, of Education of Rwanda twice. Um, um, and, and, and he was present uh, himself at the forum. Uh, also in Namibia, we have the representative of the Ministry of both Higher um, uh, Ministry of uh, I mean, higher education and innovation and basic uh, education. Both of them were um, at this event. Um, so, so here we try to reach out and talk to the politicians. And so here is some of uh, you know, our lect lecturers. Um, they are people who are really uh, willing to share their experience with Af African students. They are motivated people. Um, like I said before, they support their own participation. That helps our budget. In that case, most of our budget is used uh, to maximize um, the students, uh, uh, the number of students that we select. Yeah, so typically the lecturers, they stay for one week on average, and it's only people like me who stay for the, for the entire three weeks. And then we organize excursion. Yeah, each of these is, uh, you know, in, in one of the countries, this is was in Namibia. If you go to Senegal, you go to the Gore Island, you will see this picture here. And Gore was one of the, the places of uh, uh, the point of no return during slavery. Unfortunately, a lot of Africans were taken without the wheel. Um, and Gore, you can see uh, the remnants of, uh, of how harsh and difficult that was. Uh, this was in, in, in Rwanda. Yeah, this, is, this is in, Ken uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Ghana. And this is also <clears throat> was in Rwanda, um, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and so forth. Yeah, so we have those activities as well. So it should have been in Morocco this year, but it didn't happen. We had everything set up for you guys. Yeah, everything was going honky dory, and then and then we had to postpone. And this is the new date. Yeah, um, and uh, and 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 that's when we decided that we're going to introduce the online lectures in a much more formal way, and and have that um, going uh, permanently. Um, so normally. Uh, the host country is selected. Um, you know, you may be wondering why. How do we select the host country? It's usually selected two and a half year um, in 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 advance, um, and we do it such that uh, you know when we select the, a host country, um, that host country can send representatives to the preparation of the current school so that they can learn. For example, uh, in December 2019, we already selected South Africa for ASP 2022. And, and then the idea was that uh, then the South Africa would then actively participate in ASP 2020 for Morocco so that they can learn what worked best, what didn't work very well and so forth. Um, to select the host countries, we, we uh, call for proposal. Each country will submit a proposal. They have specific questions they have to answer. The IOC will analyze all of those things, take recommendation and advice from the International Advisory Committee and, and from some of the lecturers. And then, and, then, uh, and then we decide. This is during, and then approximately a year before that, the school, we go to the host country on the site visit. We inspect the site and everything. And then we decide on the program and we may even change the venue if we find that uh, the venue that has been suggested is not a good one uh, or it doesn't, it's not satisfactory. We, we, we hold the school to a very high standard. So when you come there for those three weeks, your experience will be, will be enjoyable. Um, so this is during our visit uh, to Morocco. This happened in April, 2019. Um, uh, we met with the advisor to the, uh, to the king 
Uh, you see me and some of my colleagues here. Um, and then we had a nice dinner at the house of uh, Professor um, uh, Mohammed Shabab. Um, all right, and then so in terms of sponsor, we get sponsorship from you know uh, various uh, agencies uh, in, in Africa and in the in Europe and in the U.S. Um, we would like the African participation to be to be increased. I will give you this example for you know in the case of Namibia, yeah, um, there were serious contributions from the Namibian government agency um, um, national. Uh, National uh, um, NCIST, I forgot what, what it stands for. Somebody from Namibia might, you know, please correct me. Um, and then the South African uh, Department of Science and Technology and uh, National Research Foundation. We also got support from uh, the Inter-University Council of East Africa, uh, which in, uh, um, amount to an integrated of 40% of the total budget. So that's, that's an example of where the African contribution was really, really non-negligible. So this is on top of all of the uh, logistics, yeah, like the university give us, you know, the lecture rooms uh, for free, we use the electricity for free and so forth, we use, you know, and a bunch of things. Those are the logistics that the host country provide uh, free of charge, yeah. Um, in the IOC, we write proposal, we request uh, funding, some of these funding, uh, they are only one time, then they disappear. We have to constantly look for funding. And there are people like Mary Bishai here who have helped me a lot in that process. And some of our colleague lecturers also help a lot. Um, so, um, so, so, so that's how that, that is going, okay? So the picture that I show over here is specific for ASP 2018. For the previous one, it will be slightly different, like I said, because some funds have dried out and we find other sources. For the for Morocco one, it's certainly different. Some of them are permanent. Yeah, ICTP, for example, has supported us, um, you know, for every school. Um, the host country in kind support changes, and blah blah blah. But you got the idea. All right. In terms of impact, I said that we organized some surveys. Um, one of the surveys, I said that there are two surveys, one at the end of each, each edition. Here we are asking people, you know, how satisfied are you of your experience? You see the response, four and five means that, uh, you know, they are very satisfied. Um, we ask, you know, uh, how, my, how your research has benefited through professional contact made at ASP. You see the answer here as well. And then this one, um, I won't read it to you, but you can look at the slide later. Um, then um, the second survey is we do this every four years, like I mentioned, then we survey everybody. We try to know where they are. Um, I will just flash this one. Um, we try to find out where those alumni go after they have attended the school. So, um, so you see I have 50% of them um, are stayed in their country, but there are some migration in other areas of the world, which is certainly good, but we want to, those people to be able to come back to Africa and help Africa uh, after they have gotten, um, you know, higher education, education abroad, or they have, you know, done something abroad. Uh, we don't want to lose the African talents uh, through brain drain. So that's one of the, the issue that we are doing, we have to deal with that funding agencies are, are asking us what happened to the students after they have, uh, they have uh, um, you know, they have attended the school. Um, so then the structure mentorship um, is one of the things, is the, is the stuff that I am going to, uh, you know, uh, talk about now. So this basically, like I said before, includes all of the activities um, in between the con consecutive terms ASPs. Um, to, for, to further support the alumni's growth and academic process. Yeah, so we don't want after you have come to a school for three weeks and then you just disappear into thin air. We don't have any contact with you. We don't know how things are going for you. So the mentorship program is to maintain that connection and to see how we can help you and how you can help us. Yeah, so it's not just one way. You also can help us in some ways. Either you can come back and give talks or you can find some funding agencies for us, or you can make us put us in contact with your professors and with whom we can establish collaboration. So there's a lot we can do. 
and those things cannot happen just within three weeks uh, of, of school. That's why the mentorship program is extremely important. Um, as a part of the mentorship program, we have this short-term research visit, um, which started last year. Um, the Department of Energy of the United States gave us some funds in addition to Brookhaven Lab. Uh, through that, we were able to bring nine ASP alumni to, to Brookhaven. And this is, uh, uh, these are some of them. Um, and uh, um, um, so, so they, they stay for three months, uh, up to six months. Some of them were at BNL until from July until December. Um, so you can, you can talk to them. Um, and some of them already have PhDs. By the time when they came, they were already postdocs. Um, and uh, so this is a different view of, of that. Um, the, yes, one of our leaders at, 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 uh, at BNL, uh, Professor Bern Mira. Um, and uh, you know, so this picture was taken um, with uh, the students and, and the people who supervised them when, when they came. So, and, and so these, guys, these people, when they came, these nine people, they were all in different areas of physics. Brookhaven is not just particle physics. It has a huge nuclear physics. It has light sources. It has uh, nanoscience. It has renewable energies. It has uh, biophysics. In, and, and, and accelerators is a multidisciplinary lab. Yeah? And all of these people were in different fields. So Mary Bichet and I had the task to try to, um, you know, um, place the alumni with a BNL, Brookhaven personnel physicist who will coach that person to work with that person. Yeah? Um, so that's why I want to make sure that you understand that I am a particle physicist, but this school is beyond particle physics. Um, so um, like, you know, this young lady here uh, phoned me. She worked with uh, Dr. Kathy Kotler. Uh, Diallo worked with, work, work with me. Um, the other people, uh, Christelle Ecoso from Cameroon, she worked with somebody else in the light sources um, and so forth and so on, yeah. So um, that's, 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 that's how it went. Um, here is uh, Alan Stone from DOE, one of the people who provide the funding for this program. Um, we were going to do it again this year, but because of COVID, it has been postponed. Um, uh, so we may select you for this program, depending on how much funding we have next year. Um, you know, but it will have to be after the, after the, after the ASP school and so forth, yeah. So, um, so that's, 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 that's how it's, it's going. So when Eve, Eve Kimi, he's from Burkina Faso, he came to BNL, he worked with uh, one of our staff, staff scientists for three months. Um, and Peter Denton, who also works with uh, uh, Mary Bishai. Um, and they, they produced a paper. Yeah? And this paper is currently under review to be published. Yeah? And, and uh, Eve gave, an ASP seminar on this work on November, uh, November 5th. I think it was last week, some of you were there. Uh, so you can see that this is really a very good program. Um, now Eve is in a PhD program in, in the Netherlands, yeah, but just three months at BNL, he, he has, he's on top of all of this stuff. So Mary and I are very proud of him. Um, so um, during that time as well, um, Munia Lassiri, um, she's from Morocco. She already has a PhD. She was a part of this program. Um, she represented ASP at uh, the um, division, um, American Physical Society Division of Particle and Field um, 2019 meeting. It was in Boston. So Munia went there and gave a talk on ASP. And uh, this paper here is the proceeding it's a contribution to the DPF proceedings. Yeah. So um, on top of that, we try to support other alumni, um, you know, and there are two of them here. Um, um, Chirufia is a, a, an alumnus of ASP 2010, the first one. She now has her PhD. Um, and uh, Diallo Boy, which, who I mentioned before, is an alumnus of uh, ASP 2012. He just got his PhD a month ago, 
Both of them are now postdocs at BNL. Yeah? They have started postdocs at BNL, and now uh, I have I have co-supervised Yalo's uh, PhD thesis directly. Yeah, so it wasn't just mentorship. I was officially on his PhD thesis, co-supervising him. I did a lot of analysis, uh, physics analysis with Yalo, and even now we as he as B, as a postdoc at BNL, he's still working with me, and and we are we are working together. Yeah, so and uh, so I've seen these people through their career progression. I have to say that I'm extremely proud of uh, of their achievement. Um, and now, uh, so and but these are just two cases. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of people uh, with whom um, people like me, Christine, Marie, and other colleagues have tried to engage and help them. Um, recently. I was uh, uh, a direct uh, supervisor of uh, Lucrez. Uh, Lucrez is from Benin. She's uh, an alumnus of ESP 2018. And then she was selected for AIMS and she did her AIMS research project with me. And all of these things happen remotely. And the project basically is uh, about using deep learning to classify um, you know, a large data for analysis, yeah? which data people request the most uh, to be available very quickly for a faster turnaround, which data should be packed um, into storage be because people are not requesting them enough. Yeah, so she just got her master's at Ames. Um, so we do that, that, that sort of things too. So, um, so you can see that in addition to my research work, I spend a lot of time trying to help you guys and I go out of my way to make sure that uh, if I can help you in any sort of way, I, I, I don't hesitate to do it. And I would like you guys also to have that example. Uh, when you get yourself established, uh, you know, think about the people behind you as African students, how can you help? That's the only way we can contribute, you know, to the development of our continent. Um, so then, you know, when, when, when COVID essentially you know, uh, happened and we had to postpone the school, then we have the idea of uh, what exactly, you know, what can we do? As you may recall, back in April, I sent an email to all of the alumni and telling them that uh, we could get involved into studying COVID-19 data from, from, from African countries. And I specifically say that before you say yes, you should ask your advisor, make sure your advisor is aware of it, make sure he approve. And so a number of people responded so in April, we started doing this work. Um, we, we publish, uh, we release one publication. Um, now it's on the archive, it, it's still under, under review. The study is uh, continuing and there are more people who came to join. And uh, so here is now the current team of people. And we have also people who are non-ASP alumni. So Mialo is ASP alumni uh, uh, of 2016. George here also 2016. Um, Toivo is uh, um, 2020 yeah? and, and so forth, yeah. Um, and then there is my colleague, Simon Cornell here. So we meet every week and we study COVID-19 data from African countries. Each of these people are focusing on a particular country, even if it is not their country. For example, Cyril here has been dealing with Benin, as well as uh, Alwani also dealing with Benin. Uh, so, um, so here are the countries that we are studying right now. There are 10, 10 countries whose COVID-19 data we are looking at. It's a very dynamic group. Like I said, we meet every week on Tuesdays and we review progress and so forth and so forth, yeah. Um, so here's one example of the data that we have. What you see at the top over there, there are, there are four, four, um, four graphs in this plot. Here is, uh, this is for Mozambique. Um, here is the, 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 the number of death. This is normalized to the total population, number of death uh, uh, with COVID as a function of time. Um, you know, here are the number of people who have recovered. The blue is the number of active cases and the green is all of the total cases. So um, first we, you know, we model the data um, you know, with uh, a mathematical mod modeling that try to, um, you know, uh, to describe the evolution of the disease with a set of parameters. And out of that, we derive the, what the 
what they call basic reproduction number, which tells you whether the pandemic is growing or is slowing. So at the top left, you see here the basic reproduction number for Mozambique. It's also as a function of time. You see the fluctuation. If it is below one, that means the pandemic has stopped. If it is above one, that means the disease is growing. Yeah, and the red are the uncertainties. So we now put in uncertainties on all of those numbers. This, this work is done entirely by Toivo Mabote from, uh, from Mozambique, an extremely uh, excellent guy. And some of the check that we are doing is uh, data of a model plot. If the model is, is uh, representing the data correctly, then this graph should be at one, completely one all the, all the way through. You see the fluctuation here. You see the uncertainty. We, this plot is for each of the cases. This is the death rate. These are the total case. This is the active case. These are the recovery cases. Yeah, so um, we are foreseeing um, another paper, a larger paper that will have the 10 countries that will have more information um, compared to the previous paper that, uh, that we released. So that brings me to, so, so those are some of the things associated to the mentorship program. So like I told you, all the things that, ha that happened, which are not happening during the three week school, they happen afterwards and they are very, very important. So this happens, the mentorship, structured mentorship happens continuously, even when we don't have a school. Um, it has been open to PhD students so far um, because we didn't want to stress the mentors because the mentors are volunteers from the list of lecturers. Yeah? And like we said, they are not replacing your academic advisor. We wanted PhD students who already have an idea about the, the research they are working on. They are somewhat independent and, and they are not gonna burden our mentors. And like I said, the, this program is not a replacement of your academic advisor. Not at all, you mustn't think that. You should have your academic advisor at your university, keep working with that person. And then in addition, we have the mentorship program to collaborate with you and your academic uh, uh, advisor to see how best we can support you. That's what it is about. And this also help track you know, all of you guys after the school, like I said before, we want to know what happened to you after you have ten, attended the school, what is going on, what is not going on, how we can help. Um, and also we help, we, we, we try to answer the question, where are they now? So that the school, what's happening? Um, because funding agencies are asking, what is the impact? You know, we have given you money for three consecutive schools right now. Where are the students? What, what have come of them? Yeah, so, and that's why we support this program with these periodic surveys to try to monitor what is happening with, uh, with, uh, with you. Um, so, like, so you have seen in my previous things, um, through this program, we have been able to place some students in higher educational program all over the place, um, which is good, but we do want you to go back to your country and take a position over there and, and really do something and make sure that we lessen the issue of brain drain. Um, so we started the structured formalized mentorship program in 2016 after the Namibian school, um, the Rwandan school. Um, so we did, we selected a bunch of students uh, for two years until we went to Namibia for the next school. And after Namibia, we repeated it again some, some students rotated out, you know, when they have they got the PhD already, they don't need that, that mentorship from us anymore. They, they need some different support, yeah, but they don't have to be in the program for us to be mentoring them uh, at that point. And then new people came in and so forth. So, um, and now if we had had the school in Morocco, then we'll be discussing the third round of this mentorship program, but never tell us we are going to do it. Um, so that's why I want to talk to you about the responsibility of the mentor, the responsibility of the men mentees, how do we pair? Because we try to pair mentees with mentor. We tell you, you know, this is, you know, John Doe from, you know, the University of Antarctica is the one who is going to be your mentor. And we tell John Doe uh, that, you know, Jane Doe from, some university in Africa is going to be the mentee. 
you do that pairing, okay? And we brief everybody, then it gets going, yeah? Um, so so that's, 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 that's how it happened. Um, so, um, so, so basically, right, we want to accelerate and address African students' academic needs. Um, like I said, we are not replacing your advisor. We just want to be there for additional support when, when needed. Okay, hopefully that will be, that will be uh, uh, helpful to you. So all of this is to build capacity in Africa to support students to identify what are the obstacles academically. You know, I, have, I know a lot of people who are struggling and they, 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 it's, it's very good people uh, who are struggling um, at their universities for various reasons. And uh, you know, how do we solve problems? What are your own uh, capability of addressing those obstacles? Um, what are the challenges that you are facing to finish your PhD, to finish uh, your master's? You know, what can we help with, yeah? Um, you know, how do we manage all the, the things that you need? I, I can also tell you that sometimes we haven't been able to help because we just don't have the resources to help. But we certainly listen to you. And when it's possible for us to help, we will help. And, and I have helped a lot of people. Okay, um, um, so, so that, that is, that is, the, that is the, the issue. Supplement academic advisory to support and ensure that you are growing in your academic journey, yeah? Um, so, and so, so that's what the mentor is supposed to be doing. And, and he will or she should be actively contacting you. So for example, me too, I get absorbed in my work and there are so many things going on and I don't, I haven't heard from one of my mentees in three months. And then one day I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh, you know, what's going on? I haven't heard, heard from Jen Doe in three months. Then I'll say, I will contact Jen Doe. I say, hey, what is going on with you? Uh, should we chat? Let me know. I want to hear everything about your academic journey. What is it? Is there an issue? Is there any? How can we help? Then I, you know, I I'm the one who make that contact. But also on you, when your mentor hasn't contacted you, then it's, it's up to you to engage that 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 person. There have been cases where people volunteer to be mentors, but they didn't do anything. Now those are disappointment, and those are failure in our program. So I'm not saying that everything is honky dory. We have to fix those things, those where we have points of failure. We need to acknowledge those things, those things and, 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 and fix them. Yeah. So um, ultimately the coaching should really be minimum. That's why we decided that maybe we, we should cut it at uh, people who are already in the PhD program. But of course we have resources and, and, and if we can actually support these things in a more financial, financially oriented way, um, then there could be more coaching. Uh, and so long as it is agreeable to the student's uh, uh, academic advisor, and I understand that some people who are at the bachelor degree level or maybe a master's level don't yet have an academic advisor. And, but, you know, a, because it's on voluntary basis with respect to the mentor, there is so much we can ask that person. They are also involved in the research. They have other things going on. So, they cannot babysit you, okay? So you have to be able to uh, get to some level where you take advice, you go on it, you research it, you come up with some suggestions and solutions, and you see if uh, this mentor can actually, you know, guide you in some minimal way, yeah? Um, so, so, so your responsibility is that, you must communicate. Let's say you haven't heard from your mentor in three months, uh, you know, ask for a meeting see what's going on. Maybe your mentor also, they have a lot of things going on and life is difficult for everybody. But you know, um, you, 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 have, you need to make that effort. Once we have told you, this is the parent, this is your mentor. Yeah? In principle, that person will try to meet with you and try to see how to get going. And if you don't hear from the person, make the contact, seek the help. Yeah, and sometimes there are, are people I don't hear from them. And then it's only when I 
we talked and I realized that a lot has gone on. There were issues, but they feel like they didn't want to bother me. You know, I think it's okay to bother me. I might not be able to help, but you should feel free to bother me. And, you know, I will try to find the time for us to have a Skype chat and understand what is going on if it is possible for the mentor to help or not. In all of these things, you consult with your advisor. I have been mentored with some students. I tell them, make sure that you are your advisor is in the loop. I don't want to do anything with you behind that person's back. That person is still responsible for your academic journey at your institute. That's the person you respond to directly to make sure that uh, your thesis or your work goes on very well. So that person has to be in the loop and that's how we do it. Um, so you have to be able to be available to have a Skype chat or other means of communicating with uh, your mentors. Um, and, and then when you talk to the mentor and they give you some suggestions, you should follow through with it. It is, it may be true that the mentor doesn't really appreciate the problem that you are facing and the suggestions are not really appropriate for your case. Those things may happen but feel free to talk to that person. But you know, you don't want to meet the person today and meet them a month later, they, they suggested this, this and that, it hasn't been done. And then you are meeting them again of the same problem. It doesn't look good. Yeah. So you, you have to take it really as an active engagement enthusiastically. If it is not working, you come back to us and say, okay, look, it's not really working. One of the point of failure of our program is that Sometimes we may pair you with somebody who is not in your academic field. We have seen that a lot because we just don't have enough mentors so that we can pair you. You know, if you are in condensed matter, we have somebody we pair you up who is also in condensed matter who understand the detail of your project. We don't succeed in that because we don't have a lot of mentors that so for, to to establish that one-to-one -one relationship around the academic, uh, uh, um, the academic uh, research uh, project of the mentee. So you may find that we, you are in condensed matter, but we pair you up with somebody in high energy physics. That has happened to me. I have a couple of mentees or two or three of them. They are in, in a condensed matter field. I really don't understand the detail of their research. It's difficult for me to help them solve those problems because that's not my field. But I am there for them. I talk to them. I understand the problem. And then sometimes I may think, ah, I cannot solve that problem. But I have my colleague, Jane Doe, who is in a condensed matter in, over there. Let me contact Jane Doe and see whether uh, uh, she can help you. So I have done stuff like that. So that's the mentor can do stuff like that. If academically they cannot help you, they should and they might be able to point you, connect you with a, a colleague of theirs who might be able to address a specific question related to the academic stuff. But all of the other question, you know, um, that the support things for your for your for your for your academic journey, you know how the research itself is going, your, you know, and whether you have resources to complete your stuff. You know, I, there are some students, for example, that we have managed to, to, to send to Itembalab in South Africa for them to complete the project because at the universities, they just couldn't do it, but they, they were struggling. So we had to make that arrangement with the advisor and Itembalabs and it all worked out. Stuff like that, we can help with. But of course, there have been many failures. I can tell you that there are some cases we tried, it didn't work out. Um, but I can assure you that we want to try. And, uh, and, 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 and if we have more resources, we can do more. Um, so, um, so at the moment, so what will happen is that, uh, you know, um, we, it goes through a selection process, okay? If you want this mentorship program, there is a page where you can you go and formally apply. There's a set of questions we ask. 
um, you know, so it just doesn't happen from a randomly. You still have to apply for this. Um, and, um, and then we talk to the, the people who have volunteered to be, to be mentors. Um, and then we try to establish that pairing after we have made the selection of who are going to be uh, benefiting for this round of, uh, of mentorship. Now, it doesn't mean that the people who were, <clears throat> who were in the uh, previous round, it doesn't mean that their mentorship stopped. The relationship that they established with the mentor before that should continue, even after they have gotten a PhD and they are doing something. Uh, now they have a collaborator. Yeah? They have somebody that has been their mentors that is now their collaborators uh, in some ways, and they can always, you know, um, um, rely on that person for other communication, even after they have, they don't need the program anymore. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then, like I said, halfway through the program, once you start with your mentor, a year later, we will do uh, some sort of an assessment and we'll ask you, how is it going? Sometimes we hear feedback there saying that, ah, you know, the mentor doesn't really understand my issue. It's not in my area. Or I've tried many times to contact him or her. I'm not getting any response. I've just given up. There are things like that. Like I said, it's not honky dory. Yeah. But we're trying to do our, uh, uh, the best that, that we can do. Um, so um, so, so that's, that is all that. So basically what's going to happen right now um, is basically this, this item here. The, this program now should start in March and April in 2021. Before that, there will be the application process. If you are interested, you apply. We will identify the mentors. We will select you. We will brief you and the mentors. We will do the pairing. And then from March and April 2021, it will be up to you and your mentors how you want to self-organize um, and, and so forth. Only a year later, we will come back to you guys and ask. We also ask the mentors. How is it going? We also have feedback from the mentors as well. Yeah, um, you know, you you are you are expected to use many different form of communication uh, with your mentors. Um, we understand that there are issue of good internet connectivity in some areas. When we are doing this COVID nineteen uh, uh, exercise, we meeting every week, uh, Zoom meeting and so forth. Internet connection problems, and uh, we know that some of you have to buy the internet or buy data to be able to connect. Uh, uh, those are difficult issues, and we would like to be able to find solution for those things. Um, you know, um, and and we have been discussing about those things in the international organizing committee. How we really want to address that problem, and you know, we have like two. We have uh, two. Um, lectures per week then we have the COVID stuff and there are probably other zoom meetings and we know that some of you guys you know have to connect on your cell phone use your own data it's expensive you know i understand and we understand that issue and we want to resolve it we don't have a solution yet but you know um we we, we are working on it uh, you know but i cannot promise promise anything right now all right so if you want to register, um, here's the registration link here. You go over there, you go through the process and you register. Um, then um, sometime uh, early next year, we will uh, make the selection and then we'll brief you and the mentors, we'll make the pairing. And then that's it, you start meeting your, your, your mentor from that point on, yeah. And uh, so here are some of the surveys that we have received. <clears throat> Uh, some of the feedback uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, uh, from the mentors and the and the and the mentees. For instance, uh, you know, there is somebody who said, "I need another mentor. Um, it is somewhat okay. I need to communicate better. It could be better. Um, you know, it meets my expectation. It's going very well. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and yes, yeah, feedback from mentors, how they assess the mentee. You know, um, sometimes the communication is not going very well, or they don't feel the the mentee really grasp what they are doing, or they don't seem to have directions or confidence or whatever. Uh, um, 
So these are some of the areas of improvement. I'm not gonna read all of them. So I just want you to understand that I'm not saying that everything is honky dory. There's still a number of points of failures. We want to fix those things as we go forward. We want this program to become really um, a, a very successful program because like I said, it's, this mentorship is everything that happens after those three weeks. So you can see that uh, it, it's very large and it's certainly very important. It's even agreeably more important than just uh, your presence uh, for three weeks at the school itself. Yeah, so that's, I will stop there. Um, <clears throat> so I will stop there. If anybody has any questions about the mentorship program, you should ask. Okay. And um, otherwise, I have given the link now. Yeah, I give the link. Um, you should just go there to, on the link, which is right here, and register. I think the, the registration will open on December 1st. So you cannot really register yet at the moment, uh, uh, right now. Um, it, the registration will open on December 1st. So if you don't register, we cannot really put you into this program. And remember, we want to make it formal. Uh, we want to know a bit more about you um, so that we can better pair you with uh, a mentor. And that's what the registration process is about. So we ask all of those questions. Yeah. Um, so that's basically all I'm, I have to say about that. Uh, KTV, thank hello. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for the overview. I mean, it's like uh, uh, you give us, uh, as you said, always like a comprehensive overview for ASB. Uh, but I wanted um, to mention that it's like some of us they are uh, or we are not uh, we are not studying at the moment. So it's like some of us are working. I mean, they, they finish, uh, some of us finish their MSc and they are working. Do you think, uh, can they uh, be considered for the, for the program? I mean, for the mentorship program? I mean. Yeah, I think, you know, if, um, I, I think so far we said we have considered people who are in PhD program, but of course, you know, we have the professionals. We have, uh, you know, Meiki, I think you were in ASP 2012. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, so then it, it, I, I can understand that uh, some people either they stop the education, they need to work, and some are working and going to school at the same time. Things are complicated in Africa. So, I, I, yeah. I understand all of those things. So, um, you know, then the question in that case, for example, in your case, if people who are working, is it the idea that you want to come back to academia and you will need resources yeah. or mentorship in that? So, um, because all of our mentors are people who are in academia right now. Yeah. yeah. So um, we can certainly consider that, you know, let's, you know, like you, for example, you are, you are working, you may have plans to come back, you need motivation. Maybe you already have uh, a family, it's complicated, you know, and how do you, you know, manage all of those things? Um, we can certainly add, you know, that component and see how, who can we pair, you know, people of that profile with so that they can get, you know, whatever support they, you know, they can get. Yeah. But, so far, we have only concentrated on, on people in PhD program, but uh, you know, we can extend it. I think we now have a growing number of alumni. We have a lot of people who are now um, have finished masters and they are working or they have finished PhD. They, they go to industry, they are not in academia. They are completely in industry. Um, unfortunately, I have to say that at least me, I've failed to really be in contact with those people. Um, but uh, we, those alumni also, we need them. Yeah? We need them because we don't have enough academic job for everybody. Some people have to go into industry. Some people have to go to teach. All of those things are fine. 
and you know but nevertheless we should stay in contact with them so i think if there is a need for that make it then we should think about how to add that and support you guys yeah okay thank you very much thank you very much appreciate it so we have a, a question so ketevi for for me so i don't know if uh, you want to speak up so maybe Ke So May is asking, so. Hello. What, super. Yes. Please, please, just a speaker. That would be very nice because I guess we can understand a bit more your profile. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm asking if, if I am a senior and uh, I want to get help in my graduation project, can I apply for the mentor program? Yeah, sure, definitely. You are a senior, you mean a senior at which level? Uh, undergraduate. For, yeah life. so okay like i said before why right, we had basically um we we have concentrated so far on people who are already in phd program and they have um you know a phd topic defined and we did that because of the resources that we have that are limited because we also have to ask the mentors who are our lecturers to volunteer. So not all of them wants to do it. And it is understandable they are extremely busy or they feel that they won't have enough time to devote to it. So if they don't have enough time to meet with you, to talk with, then it's better that they don't do it. So some of them take that while that they really cannot do it. Um, so, so we have a limited pool of mentors and we have to assign two or three students to one person. Me, myself, I have up to four or five people that I am constantly with, uh, you know, uh, trying to mentor with, like all the people that have applied, they qualify, but they are left and we cannot assign them to anybody anymore. I take all of that on myself. Um, so that's the reason why we limit it to the people who are already in the PhD program. Um, so we can extend to like a senior undergraduate level. I mean, your question is certainly a valid question you want to see which direction you want to go for your graduate school and, and things like that. Uh, but we don't really have that integrated yet, you know, but, um, um, but I think what I would do is that, you know, please go ahead and apply anyways with all of your requirements and so forth. Then with me and Christine and other people in the IOC, we will we'll discuss and see how to handle those cases. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. And uh, there is another question as well from uh, Adat. So maybe, no, Abdelhamid, if you can also ask a question. Uh, no, I haven't oh. a question. No, 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 I haven't. sorry, that was a command. Sorry yes. for that. Yeah. But now we have uh, uh, one question from Mohamed. So Mohamed, please uh, go ahead. Uh. So Mohamed, can you ask the question? So your microphone doesn't work, so sorry. Okay, so then I will just read. So what uh, Mohamed is asking is that, uh, so he's currently applying for PhD and his uh, research direction, he had his research direction defined already. So is he eligible? So he, meaning that you already know which topic uh, you would yeah, be involved definitely, in. Definitely, right. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's yes. uh, no problem. Assuming that this is not in biology that you are studying, of course. I don't know. He's studying physics. We selected him for this. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Get it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an experiment that is good. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, uh, one comment, if possible, or yes. suggestion. So, um, is it possible uh, for uh, for the next um, ASP um, school that, uh, in a way or another, the students the students they get together and have like a kind of discussion between the students? I mean, for example, um, uh, the senior students, the people who they finish their uh, master, their uh, PhD, 
they can have a discussion with uh, with a student uh, like my case for example and then in a way or another it could be um, it could be useful I mean uh, you, Christine, what do you think yeah yeah no I, I know what you mean yeah that's yeah. Uh, definitely yes that could um, that could be arranged um, I mean during the physical term ASP right yeah 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 um i mean you guys like when you were in ghana you guys have uh, meetings all the time i know <laughs> uh and, you know during that time was Ma uh, ramadan and some of the things were in, yeah and we the, still still we still we are connected and it's become like more uh, more uh, it's it became like a friendship rather than just a yes for, for yeah weeks. still i still contact with um Dialu and the other mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in touch and in a discussion and these kind of things. Yeah, that's very good. Yes, we can we can certainly uh, have uh, um, you know let's take uh, Christine let's take down that sug suggestions okay. and see how we can put it in the program going forward. So in a program, in a classroom, so we could save a space where you could meet uh, and as well potentially as well the follow up. So as a forum, so somehow it could be as well good like what we did in each of the schools so we i mean or you created those uh, for example through whatsapp or through different uh, platform some possibility to link all the students who are interested and yeah. i think this is extremely valuable i fully agree with that okay we take yeah. note we should have um, a mailbox mainly i mean or a virtual mailbox where you could as well enter some suggestion so this is what we might as well send email if you feel that there is some additional idea of that side, because I think it's, it's very good, uh, um, Mohamed, to have that idea. Or Mickey, sorry. Uh, otherwise, I see, for instance, Ketavi, that Mary is online. Yes, Mary is on. Maybe Mary, you want to say something. You are one of the big supporters of ASP, so one of the big star lecturer. Hmm? You need my earphone? Maybe she is also giving a course. The same time. Okay. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we, we didn't expect to, to have her to participate, so maybe she could have as well problem with her microphone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see. I uh, want to see the list of participants. Uh, see which other lecturers I can identify here. Um, other people, um, please. Um, if you have any other comments, um, there are a lot of people that are connected here that uh, that I know. Um, and uh, um, so so then uh, um, then we should uh, we should say that uh, everything is uh, understood for everyone. I we will send a reminder closer to December 1st um, when we will open the, the online application for the next round of mentorship. Um, and we will communicate the link again uh, by email. And at that point, uh, uh, feel free to uh, uh, feel free to uh, to register. Uh, hello. Yeah, go on. Yes, uh, I, I wanted to also ask about, uh, about the mentorship program. For example, if uh, part of the program, so the lectures we had, uh, there are some certain lecturers that uh, they really presented uh, something very good that, uh, that we are really interested in. Is it possible that in the application, one could indicate interest of, of that person, even though we don't know who the mentors are? Oh, yes, we don't have that. Um, is that's, yes, that's definitely a good suggestion. Uh, yes, if you, if you, or, you know, have somebody in mind that you think the person, um, you want that person to be, to be your mentors, uh, by all means, you can indicate that. 
it doesn't necessarily mean that we, we will get that person. If the person doesn't want to be a mentor, then we, there's nothing we can do. We can do about that. But yes, um, I will correct the application, the the application uh, uh, material, and add that option there. That if you know somebody that you want to be a, your mentor, you can pull that and put their name down, and we will contact them and see whether they are they want to do it or not. If they have not. Uh, voluntarily uh, accepted. Yeah, and I see that uh, so Steve has just connected. Huh? Um, so we should. Should we take the opportunity maybe for a collective picture, Ketavi? Uh, sure, yeah. How do we do a collective picture? I don't, I don't know yet either. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> because it's good. I, we have yeah, I, yes, I think that. Because you see, you're taking picture. This is why. No, I, I, I just, I'm just taking the picture of uh, the, the people who are, who are here, uh, who are, at, uh, you know, that's, that's how I keep a list of the people who are. At who, are, who have attended, but yeah, I think I think there's a way that we can take a picture. But it requires everybody to sort of like uh, turn on the video. Uh, I will stop sharing, and uh, so uh, maybe right just to have your picture there. So we, what we want is to have everybody's picture. Uh, let's see how that. We are experts. We should know how to do that. Or maybe they know better. Or, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Maybe yes, I that's it. That's it. We have it now. There. That's 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 what we have right now. There. I think we can go to a gallery view and see all the person which are there. That's why right. this is the gallery view that we have right now. In gallery. Yes. And then um, maybe everybody turns on video, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you have the bandwidth. I have it. That's right. And here is Mary. Hello, hey, Mary. Mary, we are trying to get I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so and now uh, I think we have the gallery view. Uh, uh, oh, so Steve. Uh, How are you, Steve? Ketevi, you don't take it on your cell phone. Just take a. I think you can either through it through Zoom or at least take a screenshot. Yeah. 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 Screen yeah screen screenshot. Screenshot. Um, we were not prepared for this TV, so <laughs> I was definitely not prepared. For Life is full of surprise. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, yeah, I make sure everybody's on there because I mine it shows up like there's a two two screens, right? Where some people are on one, some people are not on the other. But we yeah, can... there are two screens. We have to take two screens, right? I okay. think it's the first All right. Screen. Because we can fit. Let me just increase this thing a little bit and see whether I can fit more. I, I, I have them somehow. I have two screens as well. Yeah, I have so two screens. Now, um, <laughs> what is uh, uh, the screenshots? How do you do screenshots here? Uh, I have also this in case later. So Mary, how do you how do you do the screenshot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, I have everything right now. Yeah. Um now I want to see how do I do the screenshot. Um, I think, uh, Kitivi, if you are using Ubuntu, there is a uh, uh, Ubuntu. There is a, um, there is a tools. Um, it's called the screenshot. You can use it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have Ubuntu. I'm using. Yeah, Mac. I mean, uh, yeah, with Windows, the same thing. Hey, Sorry, Kata, I, there is a button. Uh, there is a button in the in the. But you can do it through Zoom. In the so. keyboard. Yeah, which, which system uh, are you using? Figure it out. Are you um, using a Mac OS, Kater? Say again? Are you using Mac OS? I, yes, I'm using Mac OS. OK, so you're supposed to be Shift Command 3. Yeah. Shift Command 3? Yes. Oh, excellent. 
I can see I need you to tell me. Ah, we do not. I have to So now, where do I see that? Where, where, where did you go, that screenshot? And it goes to your left hand side, right hand side at the bottom. And then we have a look. Okay, so this is the second screen. <laughs> so um, now I would like to know where the screenshot went. Is it too full fast? Huh? To, Again? To the control V, you will see somewhere. <laughs> So I have I have some screenshots. I would like to know where the files are. Uh, just go to your recent documents, you see them. Ah, okay. Yeah. So. And and we can we can share. I think we several of us have it done. Huh? So maybe we can all send uh, uh, what we have and we'll take the best quality. So it's good to have picture like uh, we see with my kids, right? You always smile that way. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. But you always smile anyway, even in nature, I remember that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to take one. Also, I will send it. I will send it. Yeah. Too. Well, it's really good to see you. That's why, as well, we're missing this connection. So, it was good. <laughs> it's also very good to see you. Uh, yeah, so let me send it. Uh, I'm trying to share it now. So maybe as well. Uh, okay, Adam, I see them now. You, you you have it? Yes, I have it now. Very good. I know where they are. Excellent. I have four of them, so I will um, I will just put them on the agenda, uh, on the Indigo agenda, and um, if you want to download them, that is fine. Um, but uh, but I think I've taken two of them. Um, actually, I, I have four of them. Uh, I took four, so uh, so that should be fine then. Um, okay. So, anybody else has? Uh, Mary, we were trying to see whether you want to make a statement or not. Oh, I don't know if uh, has everybody been here for too long. <laughs> All right. So. Um, uh, let, let me just give some feedback as, as a mentor. So I, I, uh, I failed to in, in some mentorship duties. So the first uh, student I was assigned was, I think, in condensed matter. And I really, at that time, did not know how to help. But there have been some successes. So uh, the first student I mentored, I met in uh, Rwanda, I believe. Uh, Mariama Raja Olisa, she, uh, she was from Madagascar. And her group in Madagascar had already joined Dune, the experiment I was on, and so uh, managed to get them uh, to Fermilab, uh, which had a, a program, a four-month uh, internship program on site, and she and her spouse, who's also a physicist, and they did some really good work in neutrinos, but again, it helped that this was a student who was already involved in a project I was involved with, so that was the first one. And so Miriam is currently a PhD student at the University of Cincinnati. So, um, so and and so that that uh, so, uh, she finished her master's in in Madagascar. Uh, and then uh, I uh, Eve was the same way. He he was working. He had, was not. Uh, he had finished his uh, master's program, um, but he was very interested. I met him in Namibia, I believe, um, and he. He approached me and we started talking. And when we had this uh, chance for the first time, 
we managed to get the funding uh, and we, we and he came here uh, to BNL and I, I you know I found a project for him with Peter Denton, my colleague who's a theoretical physicist. Uh, so it helped that the students were interested in in uh, in uh, in some uh, um, in you know in uh, already so my first students that I had some success with were already kind of working in a related field and then of, and then also Katevi uh, was working with Munia Lassiri at the time um, and we 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 got her in touch with the nuclear technology people at Brookhaven Lab so then we're starting to uh, be able to place students with people uh, who are not. Uh, exactly in my in my field. So it's been a learning process for me as a mentor. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have approached me for is helping with projects or helping with uh, classes. And uh, I am not, I don't teach. And so I, you know, I'm very rusty. I'm not going to be able to help you with lessons that much because I, I've been 15 years at Brookhaven Lab. I'm a lab physicist. I do a lot of work mostly on projects or some data analysis, uh, and uh, but I don't teach. And a lot of the times when I am uh, mentoring someone, I actually uh, have the people doing the actual work be people in my group. So if, if my group is available because they're the experts, I, I know about deep learning, but I don't run the software myself, right? I, I work with my team. Uh, and if somebody in my team is willing to help, then I can, I can uh, put you in touch. So it also depends on what my team is working on and whether they are willing to, uh, to contribute to help with the technical details. So I can, I can do overall um, um, in terms of uh, guidance, give you, get you started on the basics of the physics. Uh, but if you actually want details on how to run software and so on, usually I will have to pair you up with somebody either in my team or in another part of the lab. Uh, so, so, so that's, that's been my experience, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Um, and so it, we're learning as we go along. <laughs> I think it has, I think the, the funding we got to bring interns here in person has been a great help. It really did help a lot. Uh, unfortunately with COVID now, all of that is on hold. Um, and meeting the students in person also does help. Uh, but um, we're learning. Uh, this year was the first year that I also did uh, remote internships uh, through the lab educational programs. And so we're starting, some of it works, some of it doesn't work. <laughs> so as a mentor, I'm also still trying to find a way, you know, topics that work in terms of remote mentorship uh, uh, and, and what to expect from the students and uh, in terms of working remotely on projects, I'm working with some students who recently graduated. I can't say it's been a great success, but at least we have some experience now and what topics can be used uh, for, you know, beginning graduate student, for example, or someone who's between graduate school. And uh, so it's, it's going to be hard with remote mentorships. I think we're learning, uh, of course, internet access is, is key. <laughs> And the time, you know, and of course, in, I'm dealing with, say, with students in the California. So there's a three hour time zone difference, which is not a big deal. But I've also worked with uh, colleagues in India, and the time difference makes it very difficult to, to do, uh, uh, you know, to do a lot of, to really have an effective mentorship at that point. But we'll know, we'll figure it out. I mean, it depends on the, on the time difference, it, it can be worked out. All right, I don't know. Uh, Steve, you want to say something? Um, I, I just had uh, two experience with uh, mentorship in, in the ASP. We also do that in our lab now. So I, I have a bit more experience in my lab, but for ASP, uh, I tutored uh, Farida uh, Bargash. I'm not sure I've met her, Maybe she was um, in the um, ASP uh, 2016. I don't know if you remember. Yes, she was, I, I'm uh, not sure. she yeah. was uh, in ASP 2016, which yeah. uh, you didn't, okay. you were not present. Yeah, that's right. So I, I haven't met her, but um, uh, we uh, had a few email exchanges and, uh, and a Skype uh, um, discussion. She was doing um, um, theoretical cosmology 
in uh, Oujda University, Morocco. And everything was uh, uh, going quite well for, for all of her theses, except that uh, within her group, she felt uh, she was uh, uh, quite disconnected of the rest of the collaborators in, um, in cosmology. But ex except for that, it was uh, doing quite well. And then she, she uh, got her PhD. And um, unfortunately, I completely lost contact with her. The, the second um, <clears throat> uh, mentee that I uh, was in contact with uh, was uh, Katawura Beltaco. Um, he did his, um, actually he did uh, um, his master in, um, in Marseille University. So I was seeing him in my lab um, when he had lectured there. Uh, we were discussing a lot, but he was more, um, uh, interested by um, theory and especially um, condensed matter theory. Um, so he did his uh, master internship in um, uh, the theory lab, which is uh, really close by to uh, my lab, which is uh, just for experiments. And then he went on to do um, a thesis in um, that couples nanoscience, material physics, microelectronics. Um, in another uh, physics campus in northern Marseille. And then he also graduated. I, uh, I was there for his uh, PhD graduation in 2018. He did really well. And then he went on uh, with a postdoc um, in uh, Okinawa, uh, which is a small island south of Japan. And um, I, I, from time to time, we keep on having uh, a few email exchanges. That was essentially my experience. All right, um, very good. Anybody want to share their experience? I mean, I like I said, I know things were not all good. Some lecturers did not really do very much with the mentor, the mentees, and that's a disappointment. Those are the things you want to fix. And, and also sometimes we had to pair you with somebody who is not in your area of uh, physics concentration. So in some cases, people have felt that uh, they need, uh, that the one from the mentor is not much because the person couldn't really help them. Um, and then in some cases, uh, we, you know, we, we just couldn't have really help. We understand the problem, but we don't have ways or resources to help. So not everything is honky-dory. And, and I know uh, some of you who have, had high hopes of the mentorship program and, and then has gotten disappointed that uh, it wasn't really what uh, they had expected. So there, I, like I said, there are a lot of many points of failures that we really want to tackle, but we also have had uh, you know, a series of successes and some of the example I showed in, in the talk. And we hope that we'll build up on that um, and we now have a network of people who are professionals in various areas, PhDs. A lot of the alumni are now becoming PhDs. People have masters. Um, all of those things are, you know, extremely good to see. And we want to stay in contact with, with all of those people because, like I said, you know, you guys, youngsters, are, you should step forward and and so that we can have a proper transition so that you guys can take charge of uh, activities like uh, ASPs uh, going forward. So, so um, you shouldn't disappear after your participation. Unfortunately, some people have disappeared. What happened is that they change email and then the one that we have on record is not working anymore and we have no way of knowing what is the new information? So if you you are changing job or you are changing situation and your email or whatever information we have for you is going to be different, and you want to stay in contact, just let us know what is your new email. Otherwise, it's just very hard for us to track people down once your email doesn't work anymore. And situation like that, we, we certainly don't have. 
One of the suggestions as well, Kedavi, is that indeed mentor mentee, but it can be as well a bit like uh, connected to what Mickey was mentioning to connect within more experienced students who could as well, of course, uh, be mentor for uh, different younger mentees. Definitely, yeah. So um... it's something that we should encourage. And indeed, how to do that now, this is by connection. So as you said, so the connectivity is sometimes difficult. So we were kind of thinking potentially indeed we don't have, um, I mean, we have this uh, Facebook, but we have ways to connect uh, as well beyond the web page. Each time, unfortunately, you may have to converge towards us, I mean, Ketavi or, or the IOC, maybe it's better so that we can reorganize. But I think it's very important to be proactive. So if you feel that there is some question and then we can really within the committee as well, try to, to sort this out, uh, especially for this, this mentor mentee, because as Clevie was mentioning, this is so important for the sustainability of the full project. And then as well to mention, there is um, as well by any discipline that are a bit out of the field indeed of, uh, of physics, but we have another bunch as well, quite new person as mentor who have been identified and that could potentially as well be more relevant when we will do the pairing with the, the, the coming student, the new set of, uh, of students. So, so there, is, uh, there are people that we could find that may match better looking at the discipline. Now, of course, now this is like to motivate uh, them to be able to be responding could depend as well, of course, in terms of what is asked or what is the, the need. So it's at every Thank level, of course. Very good. So anybody from the alumni, um, students who want to say something before we stop for today? Um, I would like to thank you all, um, Christine, Kitty, V, Steve, all of you. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. And um, it was, for me personally, it was really amazing that um, despite my work, I managed to uh, be able to attend uh, lectures and to have the certificates and to be connected uh, to um, current and uh, previous uh, ASP alumni and uh, lecturer. So thank you very much. I do really appreciate that. And I really find it very useful. Thank you. And uh, I would say, I mean, maybe we'll keep it for the end because I still have one little message to Kitavi. Sure. But, um, I think one important thing, a bit aligned with what I was mentioning, new mentor that could help with this mentor mentee program. And one of the aspects that we're looking at with the new service, for instance, you, you saw that I was mentioning about those um, light source and then neutron source, so which are more in the applied source. So this is a full set of new people potentially. Also, so if you follow this, you would see that this is connected to institute. And what we encourage as well you is to, again, communicate and spread out the word of what we are doing with this school so that it could motivate uh, as well by communicating the quality of what we're doing and the quantity of lecture to, to, um, to collect as well more mentor or to try to motivate uh, more people to be. So that's, I think, one of the important uh, messages as well to keep. Yeah, very good. Um, anybody else wants to add anything? And I mean, this is definitely not the end, right? We just no. giving information, there will be, you know, Steve has two lectures next week. So by all means, please connect to that. And then there are lectures on, uh, on uh, light sources and, and the applications uh, uh, organized by Christine. After that, those will be going on. Like I said, if you yourself want to give a lecture, you know, make it on your professional activities and experience that you have there, yeah. it can be interesting. We'll program those. If you are anybody, you are doing outreach in elementary school or whatever, or you are, you have a, a group of uh, you know women in physics. You are doing stuff. You want to share with us? We will program all of those things. And uh, in addition to, if you want to talk about your uh, you know research topic as well, um, you know, go ahead and register in the link that I sent. If you don't have it, I can send it to you again. And sometime next spring we'll program 
all of those uh, talks uh, because we want to also hear your experience and listen to your input and how, because uh, you know, uh, many of you are in, are in Africa and you have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, situations that, that one has to deal with. I still have a lot of family in Togo. I talk to them every day. I am always involved in solving problems. I feel like I'm there present, uh, physically. Uh, many times, but I'm really not there. I, they have different situations than I have, and I could imagine that. But so we want to hear from you. Uh, what is what do you think? How do we? What are your experiences? How how can we improve this program? How should it be adapt to the realities in Africa so that it could be more successful? So by all means, if you have anything that you think would be really useful for us to hear. Tell us. It doesn't have necessarily to be physics, it could be outreach, it could be community work, any activity or professional work, and so forth. Submit your, you know, fill out the online, uh, um, you know, request for, for a seminar, and then we will schedule it in the spring next year. Yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't use, or maybe we don't have this Twitter account as well, but that might be as well. So, sure, yeah. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's stop uh, here for now and uh, we'll continue discussion by email, yeah? One important point still, sorry, Kitavi, this is really to thank you because with all the work that you did, and I think that everybody has seen and, and there are some really nice uh, nice um, um, written as well I mean nice comment uh, so thank you for the student for sure but I think that all this amount of work uh, that has been completed for this uh, series of online and then the mentor monkey you, you saw that in DNL there was a lot of implication as well and with Steve so we have been trying to help as we can but Kitavi did uh, a lot of uh, most of the work so so thank you very much Kitavi. we cannot clap but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the work continues, so <laughs> no problem. Yeah, but uh, I mean, of course, I think uh, I, oh, yeah. my colleague Steve and 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 and, uh, and Christine as well, who did a lot, and Mary, like I said, has done a lot and give uh, lectures and still continue to support students. So I think uh, uh, you know I appreciate everybody's contribution and also all of you guys who have connected to most of the lectures and for difficulties of buying internet or data and, and still trying to connect. I, we appreciate all of the effort. All right, so, um, so let's stop for now and we'll continue uh, communicating uh, with further lectures next week or continue by email and you'll be hearing from us periodically. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.